energy is the ability to do work. Um, we talked about work before, and work can create energy, and energy can in, in turn be converted into work. Um, looking at some of our examples here, we see that the, uh, the toy mouse, what we can do is we can do work by turning the screw and therefore winding up a spring, and that gives us a, an energy in the spring, stored in that spring. Um, over here, with a person lifting the weights, um, we can do work to lift the weights, and that gives an energy stored in the weights, um, and we call that a gravitational potential energy, which we'll talk about later. Same thing with the crane lifting this beam, this I-beam. Uh, we do work to lift it, and therefore giving it a stored energy. And same thing with the car lift. Again, we do work, and that stores some energy in the object. The first type of energy we want to talk about is elastic potential energy. This is the energy of anything being compressed or stretched. Um, examples of elastic potential energy might be the, uh, the shocks and struts in your car. <clears throat> it might be the, the spring in your pen as you click it. Um, it could also be something uh, unconventional, like a, a rubber ball that you bounce on the floor. As a rubber ball hits the ground, it is going to compress and that gives it the energy to then move back up in the air. Energy, just like work, is a scalar. It has no direction. In this case, the elastic potential energy is only positive. Unlike work, which can be negative as well, the elastic potential energy is always a positive value, whether it's compressed or stretched. Our equation is that the elastic potential energy is one half uh, what we call the spring constant, measured in newtons per meter, times the amount compressed or stretched squared. Um, what this spring constant is really representing is how, how strong or stiff the spring is. So if it has a larger spring constant, it would be a, a much stronger spring. So the, the springs in your, your car, the shocks and struts in your car, are have a very large spring constant compared to maybe that, that spring in your pen, or a slinky, which would have a very small spring constant. The elastic potential energy, just like work, is measured in joules. As long as we keep things in newtons and meters, we will arrive with units of joules for your energy as well. We want to go over one problem, one sample problem of calculating elastic potential energy. Um, in this scenario, we have a spring that is stretched from an initial length of 10 centimeters to a length of 30 centimeters, and we want to find uh, the, the spring constant if it takes 75 joules of energy to stretch that spring. So I'll just sketch a spring here. And we have that the amount of potential energy, I'm going to label this as PE sub E. I'm not going to write the whole word elastic. To me, that's not much of an abbreviation. Then. So it's okay if you just write the letter E. And that is 75 joules. Now the amount stretched, that's our letter X, is neither the 10 nor the 30. It goes from 10 to 30. That means it was stretched a distance of 20. We subtract those two values. So it is stretched 20 centimeters, but we need to convert that to meters, so that becomes 0.2 meters. We want to find <coughs> what is the spring constant. So we go to our equation that we just had. The elastic potential energy is one half that spring constant times the distance stretched squared. And then we put in our substitutions. 75 joules is equal to one half times k times 0.2 meters squared. We solve for k and we get our spring constant to be 3,750 newtons per meter. So it's a very strong spring. This is probably more of an industrial spring versus that uh, spring in your, your pen. 